Hey babe, as you know, <clears throat> I just cleared my throat and I shouldn't restart this video. <laughs> uh, it's a crappy start to a video, but you know what? It's about being authentic and sharing who I am. And at the moment, I'm a guy who cleared his throat at the start of the video. <laughs> okay, let me restart. Hey babe, <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, let me just restart where I should have started at the start of the video. I wrote a book in 29 days. Never thought I would ever, ever be able to do that. But somehow I did. So you kind of know the backstory, but I'm quickly going to re-explain it. A while back, like a month and a week ago now? No, a month ago. Because we started that exact day yesterday. So a month ago, almost to the day. My friend Aaron and I were speaking and we're coming up with a story and we had this idea of making the good guys the bad guys and the bad guys the good guys and we realized something holding us back is the fact that most people are trying to be good guys. They're trying to be kind and supportive and encouraging and help people and not hurt others and stuff like that and it's awesome. Unfortunately, the biggest flaw in most stories is the good guy is limited because they can't do bad things. They have to be the good guy and always help and sacrifice and things like that. And we're like, okay, that's holding us back. So would there be a way for us to kind of take the approach of storytelling and apply that to our lives and become the bad guys? And of course, we can't literally do that. We can't go around, you know, robbing and killing and, you know, doing very bad stuff to people. That's not who we want to be. And we'd probably end up in jail if we did that. So how can we get the... Sorry, how can we get the benefit of doing that without actually becoming a bad person? And what Aaron came up with is we can be the bad guy for ourselves, for our own life. And we each came up with a challenge. His was to do 100 ap job applications in one week. And he actually got a job from that. And I'm really, I don't know, I'm just really proud of him for that. It's really cool. And my ridiculously insane, insane torturous challenge was to write my next book in 30 days. Something I've never done. The closest I ever came to was about three months. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I did the math. I'm like, on average, my books are maybe 120,000 words. In order to do that, that would be 4,100 words per day. Just to make sure in case I miss a day here and there, I'm going to aim for a target of 5,000 words per day. And day one is going to be planning because the outline was already written for like years now. But I wasn't fully satisfied with it. I wanted to rework the beginning. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to give myself one day to rework the outline. Then every single day after that, my target is 5,000 words. That way, by the end of the 30 days, I'm going to have gotten 145,000 words. And that goal was, okay, if ever the book's a little longer, I'll be good. If ever I miss a few days, I'll be good. That was the target. <clears throat> So, of course, the, child, the outline didn't completely finish it, but I got enough of the structure there that I'm like, I can just free write it as I'm going along, which is fine. So, did that first few days. Everything was great. Hit my target every day. Then, I think about one week in, I ended up going hot air ballooning. And ironically, I've been so busy with the challenge, I haven't even have, had time to upload all the videos that I filmed from that. So, I'm probably going to do that in the next few days. Anyway. Um, I, we had to get up at like 3 a.m. to go take the bus at 4 a.m. to get there. I don't know why they did it that early, but anyway, by the time we came back, it was like 10 and I was exhausted. I'm just like going straight to bed. And that was the only day of the entire challenge that I didn't write a single word. There were a few other days where I didn't write that much, a couple hundred words, some of them a couple thousand. But anyway, there's like, in the beginning, almost every single day, I'm just like, I gotta push, I gotta push, I gotta push, and I hit that 5,000 word. Like, goal. And then at some point, there's a place where I hit where it's like some days I was getting more like six, seven thousand words, and then other days where I'd like the day after would be like, oh, two, three thousand words. So it was like up and down, up and down, up and down. Like the average was still around five thousand words per day, but it was just that inconsistency that was kind of messing with me. And then I eventually got to the point where the three quarters of the book were written, and that last quarter of the book, I'm like, I'm not satisfied with it. I need to rework it. So I'm giving myself one other day to rework the outline. So that's what I did. And I was very satisfied with what I came up with, brainstormed with Aaron. And it's just like, in the past, whenever I'm trying to come up with a solution to a problem with a book, it's usually like 
hours and hours, if not days, or sometimes weeks of just like banging my head against the wall trying to figure it out. And eventually it clicks and I'm like, okay, I got it. But I'm like, I can't afford to do that. I have one day. So I just have a conversation with Aaron. I know we get along, we brainstorm. Maybe he can like jog something and I'm gonna come up with an idea. And I just went through the process of explaining the story and then he was kind of going through the process of re-explaining it to me to make sure he understood everything correctly because it's the sixth book in the series. He hasn't read any of the other ones, so he come out of, came out of the blue. And as he was explaining like things to me, I, I was like, oh, I got it. I figured it out. And it's like everything fell into place. And I pretty much spent a couple hours that day just planning everything out, but it was very, very basic planning. Like I didn't have the time to go and divide every single chapter write a description for every chapter explaining what's happening because I'm like, I have a day that would take like at least a couple of days to do that. I don't have time. So let's just have the very basic outline. And that's what I did. And I actually really enjoyed that process because every morning it was like, all right, now at this place, I'm in the story. This is kind of what happens next, but I'm not limited to anything. I just have a vague idea. And like for some reason, having that lack of structure or less structure at least, just allowed me to be way more creative and enjoy the process more. So that last week or so was way more fun. And there was even certain things that I started writing the chapter. I'm like, yeah, I know approximately what's happening. And then at some point an idea came and I'm just like, wow, that was so cool. <laughs> Including the ending. Like the ending, I knew it was going to happen. It's not like anything life-changing or surprising twist or anything. But I'm like, okay, I didn't plan on that. And that's going to be an element in the next story. And it's going to be really cool. So anyway, all that to say, and you know, there was that beginning process where I'm really pushing myself, being very strict, very rigid. Then that middle part where I'm like, all right, as long as it averages out, I'm going to have good days and bad days. That's fine. Then that last section, I'm like, all right, I don't have any target like word count. The goal is just finish the story by the end and just write however much feels right that day and just kind of like free write. And that's what I would do. And everything was fine. It's just those last three days no four days so those last four days was me like tr going to the airport trying to get a flight not being able to and still trying to get words in that day the next day going to the airport flying to flores and still finding time to write during that day and then those two days when she was at work and i was at home working and then those two days after that where we weren't together anymore and i was still at her place writing and it's like it was kind of weird. There's also like two days that I was there where her father was coming because he came, he comes like every week to clean the yard. And she's like, I don't want to like my dad to know that you're there because he's very like old school and everything. And I just, I don't want him to know. So pretty much I was like just sitting in the dark in the room with no AC, no fan, nothing. Cause I couldn't make any noise on my computer writing. So it's kind of weird. So anyway, all that to say, there was some periods where it was kind of difficult to concentrate. But I really enjoyed that last week or so of just kind of free writing and everything. And even till the end, I'm like, I sense that I'm going to be able to finish, but I don't know for sure. Because it's not as structured, I don't know exactly how many chapters are left. I don't know how long it's going to take, so we'll see. But I did succeed. And as I mentioned... Before in the previous video, that last night that I was there on the bus, that's where I wrote the final chapter of the book on the way here. And even though like the challenge is over, I still technically had one day after that. So that last day that I wrote that last chapter on the way here was day 29. So I literally wrote an entire book, 117,000 words, 390, no, 117,399 words in 29 days, and that includes one day where I didn't write anything, two days where I didn't write anything, all I was doing was planning. So technically, 26 days to write an entire book, something that I never, ever, ever thought would be possible. And now since it's been a few days, I got back yesterday, that was day 30 of the challenge, and today is day 31, so the challenge is officially over starting today. And yesterday was just me relaxing, enjoying the fact of, hey, I don't need to write today. This is so cool. I love not writing. <laughs> but there's also a moment where I realized like, you know what? Most of my life, I've been chasing this ideal version of myself. And I think for the first time in my life, 
even though things aren't perfect, but I am that ideal version of myself. Like I sold everything and I'm traveling. I'm on an, an epic adventure. I wrote a book in 30 days. I became the own, as I like to think of it, the own super villain of my life. And I forced myself. Like I put myself in this insane situation where I have to write a book in 30 days. If I fail, I have to unpublish and delete all six of my previous books. Delete the book that I'm writing now and delete all plans for future books. So literally the, erase the last 10 years of my life. And it's like, that was an insane challenge and I had no idea if I would succeed. And the fact that I did, it just like blows my mind and it shows me, you know what? I am the person that I've been striving to be my entire life. Now that doesn't mean that I've arrived, that I'm happy, everything is perfect. Like I'm still slowly going broke because I'm, I'm, I'm traveling and I'm still, you know, getting my heart broken every now and then. It's like my life is far from perfect. But I know that deep down inside of me, I'm finally that version of myself that I've been chasing my entire life. And what I mean by that is I'm the version of myself who doesn't hold back. Whether it be for travel or general life stuff, whether it be for dating, whether it be for writing, whatever it is I do, I sense I'm supposed to do it inside and I go out and do it. Maybe not always immediately, but I force myself to do it. And there's just such a tremendous sense of relief and power that comes from that. Because I've never been this authentically myself in the past. And even though, yes, there's still a ton of stuff that I'm needing to work on, it feels really good. And it, it's no longer like I'm chasing that version of myself. It's just like I am that version and I'm living my life as that version. So yes, I keep chasing like goals and aspirations and doing what it tells me to do inside, but it's not like I'm craving to become that person anymore. <sighs> feels really nice. Really nice. Also, feels really, really good not to have to write anymore. <sighs> I'm really not sure what I'm going to do from now because midway through the challenge, I realized when I was struggling to write is because part of me wanted to fail. Part of me wanted to fail and just be able to have that as an excuse to just delete everything, erase the writing part of my life and just move on. And part of me still senses that like... Maybe I should do that because I'm going through that process of cleaning the slate with everything in my life by getting rid of everything, severing the friendships that don't bring any value. And now I'm going to need to go through the process of literally deleting all the past relationships from my life. So if I get dated someone and it didn't work out and we're still connected, let's say on Facebook, go through the process of saying like, hey, sorry, nothing personal. I just need to have a clean break. So I'm going to unfriend you and block you just so I don't have that option to go back. And it's like, as I keep going, I go through that process of just releasing more and more of my past. And a big, big portion of that is the author portion. And the fact that I haven't finished my series is holding me at me back. So that gives me two options. So option number one, delete everything, wipe the slate clean, move on. Option two, finish the series, and then I can release it and move on. The only thing is, to write the series is a lot of work because there's still five books after the one I just wrote in order to finish the series. And even though I could do this again, like let's say twice a year, I could take a month, find a place like quiet place on the beach and all I do all day is just write, relax on the beach, have fun, enjoy the day. And then take maybe a month after that to just edit the book, proofread it, get the cover design, publish it and all that stuff. So it's like four months out of the year, I could do that, publish two books a year, including this one. So if I do that again this year, that would be two books in 2022, two books in 2023, two books in 2024. And by the end of 2024, series would be done, I can move on with it. And I really don't know what the right option is. Part of me is like finishing the challenge is just wasting the time. Like I can just wipe the slate clean right now and move on. Unfortunately, part of me feels like that would be giving up. Kind of like if I decided, you know what, I don't need to finish the book. I'm just going to fail and wipe everything clean. 
It's like, no, I can still do that. Like, that's what allowed me to keep going and get out of that funk where I was struggling. It's realizing I'm going to finish this challenge no matter what, because it's about being that person. I decided I would do this and I'm going to do everything that I can to succeed. And if I fail, okay, if I succeed, awesome. Even if I succeed, I can go back and delete the book if I want. And having that freedom made me realize, okay, the whole point of this is doing the challenge. And I think for me, maybe this series is that. Like it's been such a big part of my life for so long. And I don't think I'm ready to just throw a match and watch it burn. I think maybe I need to go through that process, that struggle of just finishing the last five books, publishing that, and then I can release it, even if it takes a couple of years. So I really don't know. I keep going back and forth between those two options and I have no idea what I'm going to do. But for everything else in my life, I'm slowly wiping the slate clean. And I want to get to that point where I'm able to just look at my life and be like, okay, I have no attachments to the past. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to sever all ties with my friends and close, like closest friends and family because that doesn't make sense. If that is extreme. I don't need to do that. Like I get tremendous value and I love those people and I want them to be in my life. But I do want to erase like all internal baggage, all those strings that I was describing that are kind of holding me back to the past. I want to sever those so I can finally be free. And I want to get to the point where I can have the slate be completely clean, like so clean that whatever I choose to focus on is going to be that one only thing on the slate. And whether that succeeds or fails doesn't matter because once I'm done with that, I can just get rid of it, slate's clean again, and focus on that one thing. Because that is one of the biggest things that the challenge showed me is the importance of focus, of doing only one thing at a time. Because like in the past, I would be like, oh, okay, I'm going to write, I'm going to try to write a book in 30 days. Like I've tried that in the past and failed just because I didn't have that motivation. I didn't have the extreme consequences. And I was just trying to do this as a lifestyle. There is no end goal. Whereas this is like, okay, this is one time, like once in a lifetime thing. This is my one sole focus. There's nothing else going on in my life at the moment. And there's just tremendous power in that because you can accomplish things so much faster. And the beauty of it's like, I know myself and I know that I, I love coming up with ideas. That's why I'm, I'm an author. That's why I love being creative and creating stories and characters and twists and turns and all those stuff. That's what I love. The writing process, not as much. So for me, the power comes in being able to take immediate action. And the only way to do that is to have a clean slate. So then when I come up with something and I'm like, okay, this feels right inside. This is what I want to do. This is my number one thing. I don't need to kind of finish things up that I'm doing or get rid of stuff or get ready. It's like the slate is clean. I can jump in immediately, dive in 100% until either I succeed, fail, it doesn't feel right, and then I can move on. But I need to get to that point where that slate is clean. And at some point, that's going to mean releasing the author portion of myself. And I don't know. Is that going to mean deleting the books? Is that going to mean finishing the series? Like, I wish I could just disassociate from that and just be like, hey, books is out there. Didn't finish the series. Maybe I'll finish it one day. Whatever. No big deal. But it's like, it keeps hanging over me. And it's just like, I can't let it go. I just can't until either I delete everything or I finish it. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Anyway, for now, just enjoying not working. I'm gonna be here for about a week, gonna plan things out. I'm still not 100% sure where I'm going. I'm thinking probably Colombia, but I don't know. Oh yeah, quick other thing. Wow, this is a long video again, but anyway, quick other thing. Um, do you know I had a job interview a couple weeks back midway through the challenge, then I was invited to what they call a hiring event, which I didn't really know what it was. Still, I kind of don't because a couple days ago when I was at my now ex-girlfriend's house, uh, I was supposed to attend the event. Unfortunately, there was a problem. I couldn't connect properly, so they couldn't see or hear me for some reason. So I wasn't able to attend, able to chat, and the guy in charge of it said, oh, don't worry, someone's going to reach out after and we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one interview. So I'm like, cool. Wait a day, no response. On the second day, I'm like, I'm just going to reach out to make sure, explain the situation. Someone gets back to me saying, oh, sorry, we didn't get back to you. 
uh, would you be free tomorrow for an interview? So ended up doing the interview the next day, the last day that I was at my now ex-girlfriend's place. And I mean, it's pretty simple interview, just running through scenarios, exercises, answering questions, stuff like that. It's not the type of thing you can really get ready for, but I love improv, presentation, all that stuff. So I'm like, yeah, it's just fun. So they said they'd get back to me within the next few days. So by the time that I leave, I'm going to know if I got the job or not. If I got the job, <clears throat> that means that May 9th, I got to go back to Canada for about two weeks to do the training. After that, I start working and I don't know where I'm going to be stationed. It could be Canada, Europe. I don't know. I think they have like places everywhere in the world. I'm hoping it's not Canada just because I want to travel. That's the whole point of this. But whatever, it seems like a fun job that allows me to travel, that allows me to practice my leadership skills, be outside, be physical, be in good health, put money aside because even though it doesn't pay super well, you do get tips from the, the people who are on the trip at the end. So the pay should be pretty good. Plus, most of your travel expenses and food are going to be paid by the work. So pretty much all the money you make, you get to keep. So for me, it's like, hey, I work there because it's about six months per year. So if I get the job, I could work there six months per year, work on my leadership skills, travel, be in good shape, and the rest of the year, travel, maybe write a book or two, and that might be my life for the next few years. Now, if I don't get it, I have no idea what my plan is. I mean, I'm going to keep traveling, but eventually at some point, I'm going to have to get some sort of job because money is going to run out eventually. In fact, in the last month, I haven't looked at anything except for the challenge so I do have to go back look see how much money I have left how much time I can think of traveling with that but we'll see anyway so within the next few days I'll know if I got the job or not so yeah last video this video very long but at least I got to explain everything that's been happening in the last month because I've been very very distracted with the challenge and relationship and everything but <sighs> I'm finally all caught up now so can finally relax, well, relax, spend two days uploading these videos because the internet here sucks and it takes forever. But I'm almost fully relaxed. <laughs> All right, thanks for checking in and I'll make a video next time something interesting happens. <laughs> All right, bye.